Good morning and welcome to my live this morning. Apologies for the slight delay. I had a technical hitch that um, <coughs> the camera just wasn't talking to anything else, but we seem to be sorted now. So apologies for that. So this week I've been talking about some hidden gems in our catalogues both the January to June mini and the annual catalogues things that you might have missed or maybe something you've purchased a while ago and haven't used so on Monday I used the little note cards in the January to June catalog and these were designed for um, well sort of love and valentines but I changed them up completely and made them into um, non valentines cards and this is a pack of 10 cards and envelopes this is part of the set as is this this is actually the card opened up and they're 925 and these are the two cards that I made this one here with the butterflies so on this one I've just used this card base here and added it onto an embossed layer and on this one I opened up the card and used it as a backing and added some bling to it so that was on Monday so if you missed that one you can hop back and have a look at Monday's one and then yesterday we were working with blender pens, these ones here, and in this card I mixed them with our watercolour pencils. So a lot of people have watercolour pencils in their stash. Morning Yuta, Carol, Karen and Jeanette. <laughs> um, and so just showing you how you could use the blends pens, blender pens. Um, with the watercolour pencils um, this is stamped in stays on and just gives a really soft pretty watercolour effect um, as I said I'm no watercolour expert um, but you can make a you know a decent amount of colour from just watercolour pencil and your blend pens morning Molly so today I've got some more hidden gems um, the first one I'm going to use is the Versamark and often when you start card making you'll buy Versamark and a heat tool and some embossing powder and you go mad on embossing for a little while and then you put it away and forget about it. But there's some other uses for Versamark as well so I'm going to show you that. Now we will use the Versamark with the gilding flakes um, hopefully tomorrow because I'm expecting my delivery of those today. Um, so I'm going to use that. Then I also want to show you some of the boxes. Now we have lots of different boxes that are perfect for packaging up little gifts and presents. Um, so this is the Versamark on page 146. But let me show you all of the different boxes that we have. So we have a page of packaging basics. It's on 152 of the annual catalogue. And um, I've got two of them here. So we have mini pizza boxes and they give you all the dimensions. Okay, and that's a pack of eight. Mini shipping boxes, which is what I've got here. Mini paper pumpkin boxes and paper bump pumpkin is a set of um, a monthly subscription from Stamping Up available only in the US and they come in these nice boxes you might have seen them if you bought a paper pumpkin kit because um, we do have two released every year and they're mini versions of that and they take note cards and envelopes which are perfect then we have some cellophane bags printed cellophane bags so these are perfect for just presenting a nice gift so if you bought a nice bubble bath or a small bottle 
it's really nice to be able to present that so you can literally just pop it in one of our printed cellophane bags they're all gusseted um, and then add a bit of ribbon and you're good to go we also have six by eight inch cellophane bags okay and then we've got three different acetate card boxes and these will take different sizes of cards so this one will take standard c6 cards we've got little square cube ones and then we've got um, um, square three and three and an eighth so three inch um, card boxes as well take our three by three cards so those are all on page 152 so let's just start quickly with the verse mark and you'll I'm sure you will all remember um, using this to create a background so this is really good <coughs> if you have a card and you don't have the right color ink for example and you want to create a background that's where you can use Versamark to create a watermark that makes it look tone on tone. So it looks like it's light green on green, or in this case, um, daffodil. So I've got granny apple and daffodil here. Let's just grab a stamp set. Oh, I've got too many to choose from. Oh, let's go. Forever Fern. That's always a good one to use. So that's this one here. And so I'm just going to pick out some different leaves to stamp over that. I could do just that and that and some dots I'm just going to put my light on because there's quite a bit of it's quite sunny outside but there's a bit of shadow coming in from the side so just so that you have a hopefully a better view of what I'm doing so I've got a light and a sort of darkish card here. So just to show you the difference. Now, Versamark is not a stamping up product. It's, it's um, Versamark is its trade name, but you can also buy it through stamping up. And you can also get a refill. Morning, Lynn. Um, now this is a nice clear sort of cream colour when you start and as you can see mine are rather well used these um, are probably date from when I joined so you can see there's a, some ink on there and it's just a, um, a clear ink okay I'm just going to place these on and can you see it gets um, darker as the ink goes in so this makes a really good quick background effect let's turn this one round like so go and then I've got the smaller one that I can add in so it looks like you've stamped it in this case in granny apple green but you've just literally stamped it in Versamark 
and it gives a really nice soft effect. Put one in there. And the nice thing is you can do this on lots of different card bases without having to clean your stamp all the time because you're just using Versamark on all of them. So it's quite nice if you need to do a lot of cards and you want a similar design, use Versamark and just stamp your background. So it's beautifully sunny here this morning. Morning, Claire. So there we go. That is our stamped background with Versamark. And it will work on, lot, on basically all of our colours. It'll even work on black. We just do some with the daffodil. So that you can see. Just turn that round. So as it inks up, it just soaks into the card and brings out that colour. Now, mainly we use a Versamark for heat embossing because this ink stays sticky for a little while. So if you're using on card like this, it will it does dry, um, but just give it a little bit longer to dry than our normal ink. It soaks into this event, you know, anyway. But it gives a really nice um, background effect. And obviously, you could heat emboss this whole card if you wanted, uh, you know, the whole thing in gold. And a few dots. So Versamark ink, as well as being used for our embossing, heat embossing, is perfect for backgrounds. And it's really useful if you're designing a card and you haven't got the right colour um, designer paper or patterned paper. You could use it to create your own patterned paper on the colour that you need rather than stamping in the ink colour on white. Uh, so that's particularly useful, <coughs> excuse me, if you don't have the ink colour that you're after. Okay, I was looking to see if I can see my heat gun. some embossing and I've obviously tied it away somewhere so apologies for that okay so that is the Versamark ink now I will as I say come back with the gilding flakes because I want to show you how to do those and those are in our new catalogue um, and I'm hoping that my delivery will come today and I'll be able to show you those tomorrow um, and we use a, another product called heat and stick powder, which is basically like an embossing powder. You add it onto the Versamark, you heat it up and it becomes sticky. And then you're going to add the gilding flakes on top of that. So all being well, I'll be able to show you that tomorrow. So that is the Versamark. The darker the card, you know, that really stands out, doesn't it? But it makes a great backing, a great backing. Okay, what I want to show you now are some of our boxes. Um, so I have two here 
from our page of boxes and they are just as I say perfect for adding um, a little something to a small gift in particular or for sending cards if you've got cards of the right size so let's look at this one this is our mini shipping boxes and it's in craft card um, all of these boxes are cut and scored ready so you don't have to do anything and they don't require don't necessarily require glue unless you want them to okay and you'll you'll see why in a second depending on how you want to make your box up let me just find you back again so these are the mini shipping boxes and you can see how um, easily these are going to go together so you can just fold them on each side like that and then these can go one of two ways so if I fold in the edges like so and obviously you could score these up use a bone folder for these if you wish I'm just going to do it and okay so on this end you've got an open end okay so what you can do is just fold the two edges in and the two tops in okay and then you've got that and then this is the base sorry I'm making it look really complicated but it's not it's going to give that a nice crease and this one here and I'll show you what I use these for because I find these really useful around the craft room so you can tuck that in like so and that becomes your base box and then you can fold the flaps over have your um, gifts inside and then you can um, tie that with ribbon or you could put a label on the top to seal it. Now, if you didn't want the Stamping Up logo on the side, it's very easy just to cover that with designer paper because you can just cut a piece on and put it all the way around. And I'll show you what I've done with most of mine. Let me show you one that's um, here. So what I've done with this one is actually turned it over, sealed this piece as the bottom, and then I've got the opening like so at the top. So basically I've turned it upside down like that, if that makes any sense. And I've just sealed the flaps at the bottom with some glue to make a little box now obviously this would have the stamping up logo the, the wrong way around um, so what you can do is just add some paper all the way around and the top and the bottom and this was designed to look like a little treasure chest okay so you could put um, you know for a boy or a man um, you can use that as a closed box re reusable like so just by turning it upside down so what I use in my craft room oh excuse me <coughs> is um, the same thing I have the um, flap at the bottom and then what I do is I tuck these sides in like so and seal them up and then I put designer paper around the edge but left it as an open box so this is what I use for all my um, scalloped layers like so and then I have another one that's got um, my white layers in so that makes a really useful 
um, utility box. You could use it for um, blocks. Keep your blocks in nice and tidy if you haven't got too many. Um, you could use it for stacking your glues in, for example. There's lots of different things you can do with that. And we have a whole series of different boxes that you can do different things with. Let me show you this one. This has got some odd bits and pieces in. Um, but here I want you to create the effect of a picnic basket, like so. And this is one I was playing with. So on one side, I've added ribbon here. These are just stuck on the outside to look like... I um, can't think of the word. <laughs> the rivets. And then on the other side, I put... Um, I did it as a paper got a bit bent and buckled a paper handle because uh, that's one I was playing with and you can see it's got ooh, lots of adhesive remover Lynn will recognize this this is a scissor holder that she made for me many many years ago and actually goes matches my stamping up bag and this was stamping up um, material that we had um, years ago it's got a little um, a hole in there so you can do lots of different effects with this um, but I do like these boxes in particular for things on the desktop they're just um, so useful for that so let me put these back where they came from And you can stamp the stamp the paper obviously um, because it's got the logo in as a demonstrator I'm quite happy to have that logo like that um, but if you were gifting this and you didn't want the logo on just cover that with some designer paper and my recommendation would be to do that with it open so literally just take your designer paper of choice uh, measure this and pop the paper on while it's flat like that um, so you could make a gift box to match your card potentially um, if you wanted to so you can have it open you can turn it upside down and have it with the lid okay any any combination of those you can do so those are our mini packing boxes and then one of the other boxes we have are our mini pizza boxes. They come flat like this. And these are food safe. So it's got a special coating on the inside. That means you could put cookies and things like that straight in there. And because of the covering, it won't seep through to the cardboard. Um, and also the coating is food safe. So if you're one for making lots of cookies and things like that, then um, this is perfect, a perfect size. And again, it's all scored for you ready. And I'm just going to fold these up. So it's up to you. You don't need a bone folder for these. This is very sturdy card, as you can see. A very sturdy card. So... You don't need a bone folder, but if you like nice crisp edges, then you could use a bone folder for this. And really just follow all the score lines on the box, like so. Now with this, you could easily either stamp all over the box, or you could cover in designer paper and I'm sure I've used these for one of um, our let's get creative or a retreat or a class um, because our three by three cards and envelopes fit inside this so it makes a nice little gift to do that so I'm just folding all of the edges 
up like that and I will stamp this one just so that you can see the effect so just to show you how this is going to go <coughs> this is going to go up and over and then this one comes up and over so this is the top <coughs> with the little notch here and then these sides all get seen so let's do a little bit of stamping so this is my top here with the notch um so let's add maybe some maybe some butterflies from yesterday why not and actually if i did them like th in these this color calypso coral um, it could be a gift box to go with this and then you could put in as i say cookies you could put in little chocolates, um, little stamping up inks. Let's just grab Calypso Coral. That's what I use for the butterflies on the card. This one here. So I could use any of the butterflies actually. I do love this one, but this is rather nice, this little angled one. It looks like it's in flight and because it's quite a small area let's add the little these two ones here and I might add some little dots as well so let's just do that move these out of the way Bit of a big block isn't it for what I need so if you want to orientate yourself this is going to be the front facing down okay so I would have it the way that you want it to be seen and these flaps are going to be tucked in so you can stamp over the edges okay it won't matter you will get a little gap obviously where this um, fold is Let's have that straight to start with. Now I could actually add the thank you from the um, card that I made. It's so pretty. It has its own um, shading built into it. I might put the big one in Ooh, I'm being indecisive today and you could have them you know floating off at about you know building up from one side to the other Let's just pop the little one on and some dots. Oh, I knew I'd done that. <laughs> uh, not sure I'm going to be able to cover that, so I might punch one out and put it on the top. And I, I can tell you exactly why I did that. And that's because I put my stamp not centrally and so uh, when I put the pressure on there was more pressure in the center and not at the side so that was my own fault it's always best to put your stamp as central as you can to your um, block right let's add a few little light dots just stamping those off because I don't want it too detailed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is stamp and punch another butterfly to put on top of there. 
because I know if I try and stamp it well I suppose I could try it but let's just pop it on the scrap and punch it out Grab my butterfly punch. Try not to lose the butterfly in the meantime. Now, another thing you can do with these is change the colour of the box by using either our blending brushes or our sponge brayers. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's just use a blending brush. Let's find this one. So if you wanted a pink tint to this so it wasn't quite as stark this is Calypso Coral. Okay, so you could just apply the ink, for example, just around the edges. And I'm just tapping it off so that I don't get um, any larger amounts of ink transferred across. And obviously you could do the whole thing. I'm just doing a part of it for today. So these are our new blending brushes. Um, you could use sponges or you could use our sponge roller as well with the brayers. And obviously, if I was doing this for a gift, I would carry on and do the edges as well. So it was all um, matching. Just moving that round like that. Okay, so it's completely changed the front of that. And let's add my little butterflies. Cover up my missed one here. This one's not playing the game. Try another one. That's better. So just a tiny bit there to cover this one up. Now I can either have it popped up or I can have it flat. I'm going to put that flat so it's secure to start with. And let's put another one in, maybe here. Let's get the right blue. over there and pop it down there we go nobody will know there we are so we've got our decorated top. Now, as I said, you could go on and add more colour. 
you could ink up the edges as well so these pieces and this one and that one would be seen so you can go on and decorate those let me put the box together there we go so you want to fold these side pieces in first and then this front comes up and over and it there's little gap holes there if I turn it over just pops through those slots okay and then the same this end this comes up and over like so There we are. Oops. And then that slots down like so. There we are. So you would have a matching box for your thank you card. And obviously you could put ribbon on. I'm going to put some of those... Um, that little bit of bling on to match. Now that I've found my bling. <laughs> so, um, what I would do to finish this off is I would do these sides here. And what you could do is you could put a like, tiny little pencil mark if you're unsure of which one, especially the folded one, this one here, um, which one to do. Just put a tiny pencil mark in the back on the corner, then open it back up and colour it. You can, of course, um, just colour it from here with your blending brush. Okay. But I would probably um, stamp that all the way round to finish that off. So let's grab some of these. This is the coral colour. So that would make a really nice little gift. You could add ribbon if you wanted to, to seal that up. Obviously you could put, um, I could have put the thank you in the center, but by doing it that way, the recipient could reuse that for something else. Um, obviously if you put loose food in, they probably wouldn't do that. Um, but I hope you like that idea. And, oops, and that is with our mini pizza box. So the mini paper pumpkin is very similar to this, but it's a, a more of a card sized box. Okay, so I think um, we're up and over my half hour mark. So thank you so much for joining me. I am going to finish this off. I'm just going to stamp around the edges and finish it off. Um, and then I'll pop a picture on of the finished product. So today, just as a recap, we used the Versamark ink to create a background, okay, on some coloured card. And we've made up this little pizza box to match our gift here, our card. And we use the um, mini shipping box to create either an open or a closed box. Um, as I say, these are perfect for um, having open and <coughs> using it for storage of some kind. Okay, so that's all I'm going to cover today. I will finish this um, off camera and um, get that done and posted for you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll be back tomorrow with some more hidden gems. You can find the boxes. Let me show you on here. 
So these are these ones are in the annual catalogue. And I want to say 148. But I'd be wrong. Thank you, Yuta. Here we go. 152 are our boxes. Um, so I might sh share some of the acetate ones if I get a chance. Um, the cellophane bags, as I say, are perfect. So the mini paper pumpkin box is nearly six by four. So it takes our standard note cards and envelopes. Um, and they're all um, a good price. So the mini paper pumpkin is seven pounds for ten. The shipping boxes are four seventy five for eight. And the pizza boxes are eight boxes for five fifty, so less than a pound a box. And you can also buy the mini pizza boxes in gold, a shiny gold finish. Perfect for um, giving a little gift or wedding favours or something like that. And those are five fifty and six fifty each. So page one five two if you need those on our in our annual catalogue. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. If you can join me live at five, um, Thursday and Friday of this week. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate you joining me. Hopefully, I won't have a technical delay next time round. I have to start a quarter of an hour early to make sure, maybe. Um, so I do apologise for that. But thank you so much for watching me today. I appreciate you spending your time with me. Look after yourselves, look after your loved ones, and I hope you can keep crafting. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.